It's the third day of August, according to the pagans, but it is the 22nd day of the fifth biblical month, according to the Hebrew Israelite calendar that we keep. It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. It is the Sabbath. It is the seventh day of the week. All right? And so we say welcome, welcome, everybody, and happy Sabbath. Nice to see you. So these are the laws and festivals that Yahweh gave to the children of Israel. And, um, and I, I did say in many videos before, um, I did say in a previous videos that, um, that, that Leviticus 23, Leviticus 23 should be our go-to scriptures for the feast days and the religious, what we call um, moeds, our festivals, um, that Yahweh gave to the Israelites. Leviticus 23 should be your John 3.16. So the, uh, we did have our, our lovely um, young readers read um, the first uh, couple of verses for us. And so um, the Lord just laid out the feast days to the Israelites. And he said, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, concerning, concerning the feast of Yahweh, which he shall proclaim to be holy convocation, even these are my feasts. And what is the first one? The Sabbath. The Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath, is the first feast. All right? And by the way, you know, feast is not um, a party where you're having food and drinks, right? That's not what feast means. This, this, what they've done is that they have translated the word into, into the English word feast. But it's not really feast. It's special, um, special times, appointed special times. That, that's what the word means, right? So these are my special appointed times. And the first one is, six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. And holy convocation, you shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahweh in all your dwellings. This is the first one. And it is every six days, the seventh day is the Sabbath. And this is cyclical. And it has no dates attached to it. It has no dates. So this already kills the moon doctrine that says every first eight, 15, 20 seconds, and 29 is a Sabbath. That is not true. It has no dates. Every six days, then the seventh day is a Sabbath. Continuously. And the Lord placed it first. All right, next one. Next one. These are the feasts of Yahweh, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their seasons now. These are the ones with dates, and the Lord starts. In the 14th day of the first month at evening is the Passover. So when is the Passover? On the 14th day of the first month. And um, let me see if I can jump back and forth real quick with this. Um, this is my little worksheet that I always use. This is my worksheet. And so we're going to go to the first one, the Passover. The Passover is the first feast. It starts in the spring of the year. Um, and it is on the 14th day of the first month, which is Abib. And uh, this year it was in March, right? All right, so the feast of the Passover is the first one. Let's go, let's go read the next one. No, well, let me do this before I move on. Then the next one, the next one is the feast of unleavened bread, which begins on the 15th day of the same month. So we have the 14th day of the Passover, and the next day is the beginning of the feast of unleavened bread, and it lasts seven days. All right. Now let's jump over here. We're going to read it in the scriptures so you so you know we can follow on, right? Verse 6. And in the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto Yahweh. Seven days ye must eat on the unleavened bread. So it's the feast of unleavened bread for seven days. It starts on the 15th. When did it start? The next day of the Passover. In the first day, which is the first day of the seventh, you shall have a holy convocation, and you shall do no servile work therein. So the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread is a Sabbath. Um, verse, eight, verse 8. And you shall offer an offering of made of by fire unto Yahweh uh, seven days. Now remember, Yahweh shall fulfill these offerings, okay? But Yahweh said we should still keep these feast days. Now by faith in Yahweh's shed blood. We're not going to kill any animals but we do not abandon the days. Now, it says in the seventh day, in the seventh day of the seven days, is also a holy convocation, and you shall do no servile work theory. The first day of the seventh day, of the first day of the seven days of Feast of Unleavened Bread is the Sabbath. 
And the last day is a Sabbath. Um, then we're going to jump down to verse 10. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye shall come into the land which I give unto you, and ye shall reap the harvest thereof, then shall ye bring a sheaf of the first fruits of the harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be uh, before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath shall the priest wave it. Now remember, the Lord is laying out the feast days. So let us jump back to our worksheet so we can see what we're talking about. So the Feast of Unleavened Bread is going to last seven days. But there's going to be a Sabbath within that seven days. And the Lord is saying that you should have a first fruit brought to the priest to wave before Yahweh to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath. So you're going to have Passover. Then you're going to have the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is a Sabbath, it is not a weekly Sabbath. It is a high-day Sabbath. Because three days and three nights after that is going to be the wave sheaf, which is the morrow after the weekly Sabbath, on which the priest should wave the sheaf before the Lord on the morrow after the Sabbath to be accepted for you. Now, all of these here represent Yahweh Shai. So he died and fulfilled the Passover on the very day, on the 14th day of the first month. He did die on that very day. And then they had to take his body down off the cross because the 15th day was coming on at sunset that same day. And they had to take his body down because the Sabbath drew on. That Sabbath was the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It was the 15th. And three days and three nights, Yahweh Shai rose from the grave as the wave sheaf to be offered before the Lord, to be presented before the Lord, to be accepted for us on the morrow after the Sabbath. See it? That's the three days and three nights from Passover until the resurrection. All right, let's go on. Um, sorry. Let's go on. Um, so so we jump down to, um, we're going to jump down to verse, um, verse 15. Verse 15. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, what morrow after the Sabbath, Lord, from the day that ye brought the sheaf to, um, of a wave offering, from the day when ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, you shall count from that day. Even seven Sabbaths shall be completed. So you're going to have to count seven Sabbaths from the day that you did the wave sheaf, seven Sabbaths must be completed. Verse 16, even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, ye shall number 50 days. And ye shall offer an, uh, a new meat offering unto Yahweh. Now remember, we're not offering any offering because Yahweh shall already fulfill these, but we should still keep these days. Now, what if this seven Sabbaths shall be completed to the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall be 50 days? What is that? Well, let's go back to our worksheet. Now remember, seven Sabbaths is seven seven forty nine, and the morrow after the seventh Sabbath is what the fiftieth day. What happened on the fiftieth day? This one. It is the feast of Pentecost. So Pentecost must occur fifty days after the wave sheaf, and the wave sheaf is the morrow after the first Sabbath of Passover. Count seven sets of Sabbaths until the morrow after the seventh Sabbath. You shall have 50 days. No, the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, the morrow after a Sabbath is what? The first day of the week. So 50 days from wave sheaf on a Sunday is Pentecost. Did this occur in the real? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Right? Yahushai left and went to heaven 40 days after his resurrection, and 10 days later was, it was Pentecost. And you can read that in Acts, the second chapter. That is the day of Pentecost that was fulfilled in the real. But the Israelites celebrated this every year until it occurred in the real. They did it in the shadow until it 
was fulfilled in the real. And this is the emphasis that we have concerning these feast days. Now remember, family, that Yahweh went to heaven here. He went to heaven here. He was not there for the feast of Pentecost because he said to his disciples, stay in Jerusalem and wait for the promise which the Lord promised, that he will, um, he will uh, baptize you with, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Remember that? So he told them to stay, but he left and went to heaven. So he was not here for the feast of Pentecost. All right, so let's move on. Let's move on. We are in Leviticus um, 23, and we are at verse 24. Remember, the Lord is laying out the feast days. Seven of them, he's laying them out. We're already done four. Let's do the other three. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, and in the first day of the month, ye, ye shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of the blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. So, in the seventh month, and in the first day of the month, it's a Sabbath. It's a Sabbath of the blowing of the trumpet. It's a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. And again, we're not offering any offering because Yahweh is that offering, but we must now keep this by faith in his blood. All right? That is how it works. So let's go back to, um, to our worksheet. Let's go back to our worksheet. So now we are here. These are the feasts that take place at the end of the year. Now remember, the year in which Yahweh Shai died and he fulfilled the first four, he went to heaven. So he was not here in the same year, in the fall of this same year, to fulfill these in the real. He was not here. He was in heaven. So um, it means, therefore, family, that these here, these last three feasts have not yet been completed. They're not, they have not yet been fulfilled in the real. Why? Because Yahweh Shai went to heaven. So he's going to now fulfill these in the heavenly, because remember, he is in the heavenly sanctuary to perform these works. All right, so it says that in the first day of the seventh month is the Feast of Trumpets, and you're going to blow the trumpets for 10 days. Why 10 days? Because on the 10th day of the same month is the Day of Atonement. How do you know that, Brother Judah? This is how we know. Next verse, Leviticus 23 and verse 20, 27. Also, on the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls, and you shall afflict your souls, an offering, offering made by fire unto the Lord. And I'm going to repeat it. We're not offering any offering because Yahweh Shai already offered the offerings, but we should still keep this day. And you shall do no work in that same day, for it is the day of atonement. To make an atonement for you before Yahweh your God. The atonement, the atonement. for us. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not afflict, that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doth any work on that same day, the same soul will be destroyed from among his people. And the Lord is repeating it. You shall do, you know, why is it that it's necessary to repeat it after I said it here already twice? You shall do no manner of work. It is a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Repeating it again. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. And ye shall afflict your souls. When does it start? Yahweh, when? In the ninth day of the month, in the evening. That's when it starts. Even unto even shall you celebrate your Sabbath. So the Sabbath is celebrated from the sunset the day before until the sunset of the day of. That's the Sabbath. And that's the Day of Atonement. 
So now I want us to, um, to do this real quick because um, I did say at our last meeting that this is the reason why it is extremely important that we establish the proper calendar. Because if you do not have the proper calendar, you cannot fit these feast days in it according to what the scripture says. Now, um, we are here today on the third day of August, uh, which is the 22nd day of the fifth biblical month. We are in the fifth biblical month, and we want to go to the seventh biblical month because on the first day of the seventh month is the Feast of Trumpet. So from here, we're going we're gonna, to um, just you know, keep our calendar all the way. And we're going to be um, on September 12th. Let me get my marking pencil. I'm going, to, I'm going to use green today. All right. So on September 12th, September 12th will be the first day of the seventh month. Sorry, will be the first day of the seventh month. And that day is going to be a Thursday. It is not a weekly Sabbath. It is a Thursday. It's a high day, holy day, Sabbath. And it is the beginning of the feast of the blowing of the trumpets. Now, what used to happen in the, in, in the, um, in the Israelites, um, in Israel back then, first when we were in the wilderness, let me see if I have a picture of it here that I can share. Yeah, here. So first when we were here in the wilderness, and you can see all the camps of Israel around about the sanctuary. This is the sanctuary. And you can see all the camps around about, right? On the first day of the seventh month, they would blow what is called a shofar, or the trumpet, right? They would blow this thing really loud, um, throughout all Israel, and they would do it for 10 days straight. They would blow this trumpet. Why? Why are they blowing this trumpet? To announce the upcoming of the most significant day in all of Israel. What is it? What is that day? It is the Day of Atonement. And so they are blowing this trumpet to remind Israel to prepare yourself, because on the 10th day of the seventh month, we're going to have a fast, Right? Unto Yahweh, we're going to afflict our souls on this day for the Day of Atonement ceremony. And this is the most important day of all. And this day is on a Sabbath. So, from the first year, if you count 10 days, it will be here. This will be the 10th day of the seventh month. Sorry, my marking is all crude. It will be the 10th day of the seventh month here. And it is a Sabbath. You see that? It's a Sabbath. So the scripture said that this 10th day of the seventh month is a Sabbath on a Sabbath. So we have two Sabbaths coinciding on this day. And this is the only time in all the feast days that two Sabbaths fall together on the same day. A, a weekly Sabbath and the Day of Atonement Sabbath are on the same day, on the same day. So it is referred to as a Sabbath on a Sabbath or a Sabbath Sabbaton, which we will look at in, in um, at another time to prove this. All right, and on this day is the Day of Atonement that you shall afflict your soul. Um, and by the way, it is on September the 21st, according to the pagans. September 21st, according to the pagans, all right? Now remember, it starts, the Bible says, on the day of the ninth. This is the day of the ninth, at evening. For those of us who already have your calendar, you will see that here at evening on this day at sunset is when the Day of Atonement begins. It's a solemn day, and you start your affliction of, of souls, which is a fast. You start a fast here on this day, and you continue your fast until sunset this day. From evening to evening is, is that Sabbath. And you're afflicting your souls by fasting and you're praying and you're asking Yahweh to um, take away your sins and to take away the sins of Israel and to render you sinless from that time on. That's what you're going to be doing. Right? Because this is what was done in the type and the, and the children of Israel done, um, they did this by faith every year, year in and year out as a shadow of what will happen in the real. It's going to happen in the real in our lifetime, now that we're awake, and we have established a proper calendar, and we're keeping it. And Yahweh, in one of these years, in the same way that in one of the years, 
which happened to be, um, some people say 8034, okay? In that year, Yahweh actually died as the as the um, Passover in the real. But the Israelites had to keep doing this every year until Yahweh came and fulfilled it in the real. We're going to have to keep this these feast days until Yahweh does this for us in the real. Now, um, if you do not have the proper calendar established, and if you are if you are observing your Sabbath based on the shifting of the moon, you will not celebrate this on a Sabbath and on a, and on, and on a weekly Sabbath. In other words, you remember this is a this is a a high day Sabbath which falls also on a weekly Sabbath. But if your moon is shifting your Sabbaths, it is impossible. It is impossible. And I'm going to repeat it. It is impossible for your day of atonement to be on a Sabbath. Even if you are using your moon Sabbaths, it will not fall on a Sabbath. And if you are not afflicting your soul on the day on which Yahweh Shai does this work in the heavenly, you're going to miss it. And this is the reason why I say that they have established the, the moon, the Looney Mooney doctrine on purpose to destroy us other people. We will never, we will never experience this in the real if we are following the moon doctrine. And this is the other reason, this is the, the, um, the, the, the um, one of the reasons, this is one of the reasons why the camps never provide you with a calendar. Because if they would have provided you with a calendar and you'd have counted your days, you'd have seen that it's not working. In fact, if you if you were keeping the fall the, the the spring feasts from Passover, right, you could not get the seventh the the, the seven sets of Sabbath and the morrow after the seventh Sabbath to be on the first day of the week, fifty days after Passover. You could not get it. Right, you could not count from Passover if you count 50 days from wave sheaf. This is wave sheaf, this is the three days and three nights. This is the wave sheaf. And the scripture said that from this day you should count 50 days, seven sets of Sabbath to the morrow after the seventh Sabbath. Well, if you count, if you're using the moon, you cannot get your 50th day to be the morrow after the seventh Sabbath to be on the first day of the week. You cannot get it. All right, so we know that it is wrong, right? The feast days um, celebration by keeping the moon is false. All right, so this is where the feast days are laid out, family. Now let us go to Leviticus, the, um, the 16th chapter. Leviticus 16. And this is the law for the atonement. This is the atonement in the type, right? And we're just, we're just going to read this through real quick. And then we'll, we'll shut it down, right? Okay, so Leviticus 16 and verse 1 says that the Lord Yahweh spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron when they offered before Yahweh and died. Now Aaron had two sons. They went into the, into the sanctuary. They offered contrary to how the Lord said it, and the Lord struck them dead, right? Okay. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron, thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. Why, Lord? For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Yahweh is saying to Moses, Look okay, at this one. Speak unto Aaron and tell him, Do not come in here as, as you feel. Do not come in here willy nilly. Where did he say he should not come? Within the veil, this is the veil that separates the two apartments, and this is where Yahweh dwells in here. And Yahweh says, Tell Aaron not to come in here willy nilly because I'm going to appear right here on the mercy seat between the two angels, and I will strike him dead if he comes in there unannounced. That's what Yahweh is saying, right? 
Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Now remember, this is the atonement. This is the day of atonement. The Lord is going to lay out what should happen on the day of atonement. And he shall put on the holy linen coat and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and he shall be girded with a linen girdle and with a linen mitre shall he be attired. These are the holy garments, their, uh, their garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and put them on. Verse 5. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goat for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. What is he taking? Two kids of goat and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer the bullock for a sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and his house. Now, this is very significant. This is very significant. Aaron is going to offer an offering for himself. Now, he's the high priest, and he's going to offer an offering for himself and for his house. And he shall take the two goats and, pre and present them before Yahweh at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Let me show you what he's doing. He's going to have two goats that he got from the children of Israel. And he's going to take them here to the door of the congregation of the, of the, uh, the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. What is the tabernacle of the congregation? It is this tent here, right? This building. He's going to bring the two goats right here before the Lord, right? And Aaron shall cast lots upon the goats. What is casting lot? Like you're flipping a coin, right? All right. One lot for, for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. So he has two goats and he's flipping coins. All right. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him as a sin offering. So this is the Lamb of God, right? This represents Yahweh Shai. And he shall offer him as a sin offering, but the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be present alive before the Lord. That means you're not going to kill that goat before Yahweh to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. So Aaron brought two goats right here right here, and he flips a coin, and the one in which the Lord's lot fell, Aaron is going to sacrifice that goat, and the other goat is going to remain alive, right here. And Aaron shall bring the, the, bring the bullock, sorry, and Aaron sh shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself, and for his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. And you see how many times it, re it, it repeats himself. He shall bring the bullock, which is for himself, to make an atonement for himself, which is for himself. <clears throat> and he shall take a censer full of burnt coal of fire from off the altar before Yahweh, and his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. Now, um, when we do the in the antitype, you're going to see how that you know that um, in the Revelation it says that um, that that one of the elders brought um, the censer to him that is in the temple in heaven, full of sweet incense, which are the prayers of the saints. This is what this represents. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before Yahweh, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. Let me show you what we're talking about. So we are inside this tent. And the Lord says that Aaron should come and he should bring this censer of, uh, of incense and he should put it here on this altar. And it will make a big smoke inside the tent so that Aaron will die not. Why? Because Yahweh is going to appear right here in this flame. All right, this is the mercy seat. This is where Yahweh is. These are the two angels that are over the ark. 
of the covenant in which the law of God is, or the laws are in this. And Yahweh is sitting on top of it. And he shall take the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times. So he's in here and he's sprinkling the blood here on the mercy seat seven times. All right. Now, who is doing this? The high priest. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil. So he's going to get that goat, which is the Lord's, which is the Lord's goat, which is for the sin offering for the people. And he's going to kill it, and he's going to bring it within this veil, within the most holy place. He's going to bring that blood in the most holy place. Now remember that we talk about what happened in the daily, that the blood was brought in here and sprinkled on this altar every day for the sins of, of the people. But this once a year is going to go inside here to make this final atonement at the end of the year, on the Day of Atonement. This is what we're reading. And he's going to go inside here and he's going to sprinkle the blood in here one time, once a year. He's going to do it, right? So this is what we're reading about. And he shall do with the blood as he did with the blood of the bullock. And he shall sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy, and before the mercy seat. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place. Why, Lord? Because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgression in all their sins. Now remember, this is the reason... Why he's doing this? Because remember daily, the, the sins were transferred in here by blood in type, in symbol. The, the sins were brought in here every day. So now once a, year, once a year, you have to cleanse this whole place because it is full of the uncleanness of the sins of the children of Israel. And verse 17. And there shall be no man in the no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make the atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. So nobody can be in here when the high priest is behind the veil in here making that atonement for himself and for the and for the tabernacle of the congregation and for all the people of Israel. No one can be in here. Now you know that that is significant, right? And he shall go out unto the altar that is before Yahweh and make an atonement for it and shall take the blood of the bullock and the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. And he shall sprinkle the blood upon it with his fingers seven times and cleanse it and hollow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. Why? Remember, this is what he's cleansing this. Because every day the, the, the sin would be transferred in here and he had to sprinkle the blood on the four horns. Remember that, right? Every day. Now, once a year, he has to cleanse the sins that were brought in here, that was taken from each individual as they sin. Now he has to cleanse this. Now remember, family, that this has all been done in symbol, in shadow. But it is significant that we understand this in order for us to understand the New Testament and the final atonement and the feast days of the fall of the fall feasts that are not yet fulfilled. We have to understand this. Verse 20. And when he has made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Now remember, he left a live goat outside. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat so where is he now? He's outside here where they had the live goat. And remember, he took all the sins of the children of Israel that, were, that, had, that had defiled the sanctuary for the whole year. No, he has all those sins in symbol. And he comes out here where the live goat is. 
and Aaron shall lay his hand upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgression in all their sins. I mean, and this is why I say, family, this don't have nothing to do with the pagan people, okay? Putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. So he comes out here and he brings all the sins of the, of the children of Israel and he places his hand upon this live goat, which is the scapegoat, and he confesses all the sins of the Israelites onto the goat. And then a strong man is going to grab that goat and drag it off into the wilderness and leave the goat there. Symbolizing family, symbolizing in type, the sins of Israel being removed from Israel forever, but this is in type. That taking that, that goat upon whom all the sins were, take, were transferred and taking it off into the wilderness away from the children of Israel symbolizes the removal of all the sins of Israel for that entire year. And now Israel is sinless. But this only occurred in type. It never really happened in reality. Why? Because they're going to have to do this again next year. They're going to have to do this again next year and the year after and the year after and the year after that. So, how is this, how is this going to be fulfilled in the real? Because remember, this was just a symbol. And Israel wasn't really cleansed because the next year the people sinned again. So there has got to be um, there's got to be a way to completely take away from the life of the Israelites this propensity to sin so that they will not sin again the next year. And this is what the Day of Atonement in the real is all about. This is why we keep the feast days. Why? Because Yahweh Shai is in the heavenly to perform this. Now, we're going to read this, um, this scripture which I've read before, but we're going to read it again. It's, it is Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and the third verse. Um, Paul is saying, but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sin every year. That's what we just talked about. So every year they will do this thing where the people will sin again the following year and they have to do it again. Why, Paul, why is this happening? For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats that it should take away sin. So how will sin be taken away out of the life of the Israelites through Yahushua's ministry in the heavenly? And that's what we're going to talk about in our next lesson because we're going to see how that in the antitype, Yahushua is going to fulfill this uh, day of atonement which was done in in type, he's going to fulfill it in the real. When is he going to do it? On the 10th day of the seventh month. He's going to perform this in the real, which is the day of atonement on the 10th day of the seventh month. In the real, in the life of the living Hebrew Israelites, today, which we believe that we are those people, that we may receive the benefits of the new covenant experience, that we will from that point on sin no more. And that's the lesson for today, family. I hope that we have been edified and that we will consecrate ourselves to Yahweh, that we may be ready to fulfill the final atonement 
This is my prayer in the name of Yahweh Shai, our Savior. And for that, I say shalawam, shalawam, and shalawam, everybody, until our next lesson. <laughs>